Hi, it's MG from MGMH. Welcome back. Uh, this is part two in the series where I'm trying to create or I want to create a Celtic inspired shield. Um, I'll leave a link to part one down here and up here. Uh, if you want to go and check that out, bring yourself up to speed. I'll wait a minute while you do that. We all back? We all caught up? Excellent. So, for those of you that are too lazy to go back and watch it, shame on you. Shame. So, quick update then. Um, turn this piece of horn beam to round. Uh, drew a lovely little pattern on it, a Celtic inspired mandala. And then started to trace the outline of the piece with this small little Dremel bit. I don't know if you can you can see that whether it's picking it up, but that is minute. It's probably only about two millimeters in diameter, and that's perfect for the operation of creating fine lines. Um, however, upon reflection and looking back at it, I'm not convinced it was the best option. I want to create something that looks like it could could have been used in battle, and these pilly little lines here and not reminiscent of that. So what I'm going to do is I am going to swap this little piece out, which is a 106. Again, leave a link below to this bad boy. Yeah, that'll create some dust and will remove some material. So we're going to have to take a little bit of care with this. So enough jibber jabber. Let's uh, get carving. Right, I know I'm talking in this video way more than I normally actually do. In fact, I very rarely talk in videos. However, I was going to engrave this piece out here and have a nice little undulation, which contrasted rather nicely with the smoothness of the actual inserts. However, since I've been playing with this piece, I really like the way that contrast looks. And I might actually now go back and do the outline there just to uh, define the lines. Yes, I know that's completely not what I said earlier on, um, but bear with me. Right, I'm going to shut up now, carry on this on, and uh, let you enjoy the rest of the video without me jibber jabbering too much. Now that's done and it looks quite awesome. I do have to say so myself so far. So I'm just gonna apply a bit of the uh, Chestnuts um, acrylic sanding sealer due to the um, unevenness of the actual piece. This will give me a better um, coverage. So a couple of coats of this. I won't bore you too much, but use your rules apply, shake the cam properly. Sanding sealed, we've knocked it back, we've now got the base, the canvas if you like, uh, for the piece. So normally you would start with your darker colours and knock it back, but what I'm going to try to achieve here is a um, multi-tonal sort of effect uh, that's going to take a couple of stages. So what I want to try to do first is put a base coat on of the Chestnut's uh, Spirit Stain in blue. Uh, I'm going to airbrush that on, so shut up Martin and just do it. I'm going to add a bit of depth by airbrushing on um, some uh, metallic, the chestnut dark blue metallic paints and uh, highlighted with the iridescent azure paint to give it a bit of a shimmer.
So, I've taken her off the woodworm screw, I've mounted her on a jam chuck, I'm now going to make it look a bit more like a shield because, to be honest, this just looks clunky. So, what I'm going to do is hollow it out slightly. Could go very, very wrong here, so I'm going to be very, extremely careful, super careful. I'm going to sharpen up my tools and get cracking. Result. Quite happy with that. Okay, so I've saved you the indignity of watching me sand the underneath because um, that's just sanding and boring as hell to be fair. So now comes my favourite part where we apply the actual finish. And for the finish, what I'm going to do is use um, Chestnut's Acrylic Satin Lacquer because what I want to give it is I don't want a glossy finish, I just want it to have a nice, tough finish that um, allows you to be able to see all the details from wherever you are in the room. So. 